Father, thank you. Thank you for restoring our lives today. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your bright day. Thank you for the showers of blessings that we have experienced this morning. Our heart is full of praise and our mouth is full of thanksgiving. Take control over your service. Speak to us. Redeem those that need to be redeemed. Restore those that are backslided. Fill those that are hollow and empty. Let salvation be shed abroad in the hearts of all men. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love for Jesus. Our topic for this morning's service is entitled Surviving the Night of Our Time. Surviving the Night of Our Time. Isaiah 21, verse 11. Surviving the night of our time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Surviving the night of our time. That is the topic that I'm dealing with. The scripture said that the burden against doom, he calls to me out of Sarah. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman. What of the night? Amen. Give me another version. Probably King James. Will do. The one he gave me was King James. Give me another version. Probably if you have good news, give me good news. Or any other. Except you, you change it. Someone keeps calling to me from Seya. Watchman, what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? What is this one? This is amplified. Great. Hallelujah. Surviving the night of our time. I needed a version that says that watchman, what night is this? Watchman, what night is this? There's a version that gives us that. What night is this? That is the question because <laughs> the text from the original, original Bible from the Hebrew, yeah, Gruber can give you, check other ones, yeah, they are all, uh, they are all good, the translations we are getting, they are all correct, but I need watchman, what night is this? Because that is what translates exactly from the Hebrew. Hallelujah. He said, Ma, mi la ila, shomer. Ma, mi la ila. Hallelujah. Ma, mi la ila, shomer. Ma, mi la ila. What night is this, watchman? What night is this? If I'm translating directly from the Hebrew, that is how it should be. What night is is this watchman? What night is this? Hallelujah. Praise my God. Surviving the night of our time is the topic. Watchman, what night is this? Watchman, what night is this? We are going to examine. what the, the word night implies to us from the biblical point of view. What is night? Then we will look at how this night manifests itself in our time and what we can do to survive it. Hallelujah. Now the text says 
in Isaiah 21 verse 11. Watchman, what night is this? Watchman, what night is this? Or what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The repetition of the question. You can see that there's a repetition. What night is this? First question. What night is this? Second question, but the same question. The repetition of the question is for emphasis. Amen? It is for emphasis. What is the emphasis? The emphasis is on the night. The first question said, what night is this? The second question did not say, what light is this? Or what car is this? What house is this? What man? It still maintained the main issue, which is night. Within the two questions. And that tells us that it is for emphasis. The writer or the speaker, especially the speaker, is laying emphasis on the night. Watchman, what night is this? Watchman, what night is this? We live in a dark time. We are living in dark times of our time. The world of our time is full of darkness. But scripture said that the darkness cannot overpower us. Hallelujah. The time in which we live is a kind of night or has a kind of night within it. And the earlier we discovered it, the earlier we understood it, the better to overcome it. Amen. Separate them. Separate the two children who are giggling in the church. Separate them, please. Praise the Lord. The world of our time, as I have stated, is full of darkness. But the darkness should not overtake us. It should not overpower us. We have become sons and daughters of the light through Christ Jesus, haven't we? We have become sons and daughters of the light through Christ Jesus. We bear the glory of the Lord. Scripture says that we are the light of this world. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. We are the light of the world. A house that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. Check here from the second. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a, on a hill cannot be hidden. Even though we have found ourselves in a time of the night. In a time full of night. In a time that manifests itself. With, with, with things of the night around us. But our Bible tells us or reminds us that we are the light of the world. Amen. So it is even good that we are living in this time. Because where there is no darkness, light is not important. Right? Light only becomes important in darkness. So it is not out of place that Jesus, God, our God, made us live in this time of our time. So that we being the light can become beneficial for our time. Because our time is full of night, full of darkness. Praise the Lord. The Hebrew word for Night is Laila. Laila. And that of darkness is Hoshek. 
Here in the text, he used night instead of darkness, which is laila, just like the Muslims, uh, I mean, word, Islamic word, laila. But this one is laila, which is night, which symbolizes from the text, it symbolizes worldliness. It symbolizes system, a, a kind of system that encourages evil. A kind of time or system that applauds wrongdoing. That is what the test, the, 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 the word night in Isaiah 21, 11 symbolizes. Watchman. Time is this? What night is this? Watch my what night is this? Because he addresses a man called Watchman, and the word Watchman or Watcher is Shomer, coming from the Hebrew verb Shamar. Shamar means to keep. It means to guard. So if you are a shomer, you are a watcher, you are a keeper, you are, you are like a bodyguard. You are like a gate. A gate that keeps aliens, foreigners from entering the room. You are like a, like, like a security man. Who has all the gadgets, all that it takes to protect an important person or an important place? So he said, Ma Laila Shomer, watchman, what night is this? So the watchman is the person that keeps his gate, a person that protects a, an important place or an important person. It's a person that possesses all the equipment, the skills, the power to protect what needs to be protected. Such a person is a watchman. And this morning, I am referring the watchman to the young people. Hallelujah. Young people are watchmen or are supposed to be watchmen of God. God is expecting young people like you and me to be watchmen who possess all that it takes to protect our integrity, to protect the spirit of God that we have received as Christians when we became Christians. It's to protect the word of God in our lives or upon our lives. We have all that it takes to protect our future. And Isaiah the prophet describes us as watchmen. And he poses a very critical question to us. That what night is this? Watchman. Hallelujah. One thing we should note is that in this time of the night, not all information is good for us. Hallelujah. If you are a young person listening to me, I am telling you today that you are living in the time of the night. A time where the systems around us promote worldliness, wrongdoing, evil. It promotes self-destruction. All the things around us are the things that can lead us to doom. But who are we? We are watchmen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Watchmen are not afraid of thieves. Because they arm themselves. And they stay waiting. To overcome a thief. To overcome an armed robber. To overcome a, a, an evil person. So the young people are watchmen. Even though we are living in a time of the night, an evil day is a day we have found ourselves. But just as I quoted Matthew 5, 14 to 16, Jesus said, we are the light of the world. So if we have found ourselves living in the night, in the time of the night, we have an antidote for the night. Hallelujah. The antidote for the night is light. What night is afraid of is light. So even though we are living in a time of the night, a time full of evil around us, what the evil around us is afraid of is a young man that has the light. You didn't hear that. What the evil of our time is scared of is a young man full of light. A young man full of the glory of God. Amen. That is why the watchman and in our case the young person is called upon and he is being asked what night is this? That is an indication to me that the watchman probably has not realized the kind of night he has found himself. The watchman is out of his guard. He is not actually aware of the night that he has found himself. And the master watchman who is God, who sees everything, has seen the night that is approaching the watchman. Meanwhile, the watchman has not seen the night approach. And the master watchman is calling on him and saying, my friend, what night is this? Do you know that the night is approaching? And that is exactly what the Lord is doing for us today. Many of the young people have now realized the destructive nature of the systems they get themselves involved. Many of the young people of our time do not know what they stand to lose and the extent of the devastation that will, will happen to them if they do not stop the things they have started today. Hallelujah. I read about Monica Lewinsky. How many of you have heard about her before? Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> wow. Few. Her story broke out in 1998, 99. Who, who, have, who has heard about President Clinton? Former President Clinton. Very well. So, the woman called Monica Lewinsky is connected to, anytime her name is mentioned, as even as I speak, she is connected to the former President Clinton of the United States of America. She happened to be a worker in the office of the President of the United States of America. Those days in 1998, there about. And she fell in love with the president. Mistakenly. Why do I say mistake? Because the president was married. He was even married before he became a president. Long. And she, Monica Lewinsky, was only 23 years old. Girl, that had a lot of future. This is a man 
who has come to the climax of his day. He has risen to become the president of the United States. What else? Is that not the final state of whatever he was looking for? And you are starting life, 23-year-old girl. And you are privileged to work in the office of the president. She started playing the fool. Around. I will say that because she is the object of the, the matter. Because she, she, she at the end of it, she lost. The president lost nothing. But she lost because she had a future. And whatever she did with the president is still haunting her. And that is how I came to read. So they started misbehaving in the office. And according to her, in all those times, she was playing romance with the president and all that. She understood that one day the president would divorce his wife and marry her. Look at, look at it. 23 year old girl. Watchman, what night is this? When the watchman was not really watching, when the watchman was not really aware, well aware of what was approaching, the master watchman spoke from above and said, Watchman, what night is this? I have come today as an oracle of God. To speak what the master watchman is seeing or what the master watchman knows about the young people of our time. And the clarion call is watchman. What night is this? Watchman. What night is this? Monica Lewinsky felt that she had she had won a bingo like a lottery young girl the president is in love with me he is going to divorce his wife very soon little did she know that what she was just thinking about was just a fantasy it was not something that was going to be possible she was actually ruining her present life and her future life. I am saying this thing. I am not gossiping about Monica Lewinsky because she is still alive. I am saying what she herself is saying. It's a confession that she has come out to make that I read. That I am also sharing with you. Her regret that she has come to share in order to advise young girls and young guys like you and me. And that's what I'm sharing with you. I'm not gossiping about her. She has come out to express her regret. Why? Because at that time, she didn't know the kind of night that she had found herself. Anything that you cannot sustain, don't start. Hmm. <laughs> Hello? Young man, young girl, anything that you cannot sustain, especially those that have evil inclinations, evil characteristics, don't start. They were caressing each other in the office all the time. But do you know what happened? When the president of the United States of America, President Bill Clinton, was seeking for second term election, that is where the news broke out. Because the romance started in the first term. The one she spent his four years and she was seek, he was seeking for another four years to be re-elected. Then his opponents, the opposition, took up the issue. 
Because they wanted to make a capital out of it, make, I mean, get votes. They wanted to scandalize the president that the president is not a, a, a man of integrity to be re uh, elected and all that. So they, they, they took the issue to the highest level and they brought out all the secrets, including videos and pictures and email and, I mean, everything. They intercepted their conversation and everything. But you know what happened? Because the president was seeking for a re-election, his own party faithfuls forced him that if you want to be re-elected, then you need to sack this lady. Check her out because she has brought room to the office of the president. And the president did. So I want all the young girls to listen. Earlier on, he had promised her that oh, very soon I will divorce my wife Hillary Clinton and then you become the, the wife. But when he was seeking for a second term re-election and pressure came because he needed the seat, he sacked the lady. Lesson? Lesson? Say lesson. Lesson? 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 According to Monica, the president secretly told her that she should not worry, you go. I'm just seeking for the re election. When I get it, I'll bring you back. My first appointments, I'll mention your name. Because after all, when I am re elected, that is the end. I will, I will stay on it in the next four years. And the next four years, too, that will be the end of my term. So I don't care. That was the promise. And Monica Lewinsky had a shock of her life. When finally the president was re-elected, he won. And when he came out to make his first appointments, Monica said that he was there. She was there waiting. The president was going to mention her name. Her name never appeared her name never fell out of the lips of President Bill Clinton. And that was the end of whatever Monica Lewinsky started. And according to her, she nearly killed herself. It took her mother. It was her mother that helped her. She was locked up in a room. She could not come out. A very beautiful lady. Even today, that she is about 40 something. Very beautiful. He said she could not come out. She could not do anything. Because social media, I mean, the bashing said she could not show her head up anywhere. She was shattered, broken. President has won the second time, was moving. I mean, sorry, Kakra. With his wife, Mo Monica Lewinsky is out moving with his wife, Hillary Clinton. Hallelujah. Amen. And Monica Lewinsky has become a dustbin. When we do not have a letter, do we remember dustbin? Dustbins are always, uh, only remembered when we, we have a letter around. Monica Lewinsky has become a dustbin thrown away. Lesson? 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 My topic is surviving the night of our time. Watchman, Isaiah 21, 11. What night is this? Watchman, what night is this? I want you to ask a fellow closer to you. Watchman, what night is this? Watchman, what night is this? Probably you are involved in something that nobody is aware, but the master watchman is aware. And he, he has come to say, Watchman, what night is this? What you have started, it will ruin you. Please don't move it. You've got to stop it immediately. 
Because we are living in a time full of night. If you have anything to do, you are supposed to produce enough light to overcome the night. But not to allow the night to overcome you. Don't play into the gallery, into, into the net of the night. If you do that, the night will swallow you. You are supposed to be defensive of the night. Repel the night by your light. In the time in which we live, not all information is good for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Not all information is good for you as a young person. Listen to me as an oracle of God as I speak to you. All young people, what night is this? What night is this? What you are doing, you are rather promoting the night in your life and it will ruin you. You've got to stop. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. I'm saying that not all information is good for you in your time. Be careful with the kind of information that you play with. Listen to the, the apostle. Apostle Paul. One of the prophets of the Most High God. He says, All things are lawful for me. But not all things are helpful. <laughs> all things are lawful for me. But not all things are edifying. Or no, not all things edify. Praise the Lord. All things are helpful. Monica Lewinsky was getting all the dollars in the United States at the time that she became a, a toy of the president in the office. I hope you understand. I'm being figurative. Huh? Uh -huh. When she became a toy of the president in the office, United States of America, Pentagon, whatever, she was getting all the goodies. Everything good that could come from the president went to Monica Lewinsky. That is why she, she got the notion that the president was going to divorce his wife and marry her. The best of cars, she had it probably. Whatever you can think of. Monica Lewinsky did not go and steal the president. The president was too old to be stolen. <laughs> it was lawful, but, uh, but I'm also a woman. It's the president who has come to propose to me. So, I mean, what have I done? Am I not a woman like, like Hillary Clinton, the wife? I am also a woman. Lawful. But not all things are helpful. That is the crux of the matter. The thing can be lawful. No one can take you on. No one can fight with you. you I, I, I own my life. Why? Leave me alone. Lawful. But think again. Whether or not it is helpful. Does this help? Will it help? All things are lawful. But not all of them are edifying. Monica was enjoying, but it was a moment. The enjoyment was not edifying, was not sustainable, it was not lasting. It was a transient enjoyment that actually at the end of it all brought to her a lasting shame. The time in which we live, beloved, urges us to love the world. My beloved young people, the time in which we live 
urges us to love the world. But we must love the world. Praise my God. The time urges us to love the world, the cosmos. Love the world. Enjoy life. You're a young person. But our scripture urges us to love the word, the word of God. Love the word of God instead of the world of God. We must love the word. We declare that we will love the world. Hallelujah. We declare young people of our time, we will love the word. We will not love the world. Praise my God. Oh my God, oh my God, my generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise. Your name, my generation, shall praise your name. My generation, shall praise your name. Forevermore, my generation. Shall praise your holy name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise. Hallelujah. We declare that we will love the word of God. We will not love the worldliness of the world. We will gather enough power to resist the night. I didn't get your amen. amen. These are declarations in their prayer. We will gather enough power to resist the night. Amen. Because the night is with us. We can only resist it. We can only repel it. Repel the, the, the night. Let the night go back from you. Gather enough power like a, like a, 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 a security man a bodyguard will gather all the skills and the accoutrements, the equipment to protect whoever he's protecting. As a young person, even though we are living in the night, gather enough power to resist the night. Amen. We will not succumb to the night and the dictates of the night. Amen. Amen. Young people, what night is this? Young man, young lady listening to me today, what night is this? And I'm talking about what you are involved. What you are involved in, even now that I speak, the things you are involved in, what night is that? Is this something helpful for you or it is something that has the potential to destroy you today and your future what night is this young person the night as i've said stands for the works of the flesh it symbolizes the works of the flesh In our time, the night expresses itself in fornication, 
among the young people. Illicit sex is a kind of night that is destroying so fast the young people of our time. It's a night. What night is this? Resist it. The night, how does the night express itself? It expresses itself in lesbianism and gayism. Resist it. Watchman, what night is this? Let this question keep on ringing in your, in your heart and on your mind throughout your life. What is it that I am involved? Wake up. If you are involved in evil, you are involved in things of the night, wake up. It is not too late. As long as it is day, you have the, the opportunity to get out of the night and chart a better path for your life. Create a better story for your life today and tomorrow. Praise my God. The night manifests itself in masturbation. And this one goes on many, on many occasions, goes on among the young men that are brought in the church, brought up in the church. Masturbation. You are afraid to impregnate somebody's daughter because you are a student. So what do you do? Then you are masturbating. It's a night, a kind of a night. Be careful because it will destroy you. The medical practitioners among us will tell you the effects of masturbation. It will kill you. The health implications of masturbation, you cannot bear it when you grow. When you, you, you grow up to the age of 40 onwards, my brother, you'll be doomed. You will wish you were not born because you masturbated. Be careful. What night is this? Watchman. Night in our time manifests itself in alcoholism, in smoking. Be careful, it's not good for you. Another serious manifestation of the night of our time hmm, is pornography. Say Yahuwah. <laughs> pornography. Be careful, young person, of pornography. It's a, it's, it's, it is a certain night around you. Don't enjoy it because you, 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 you'll be destroying your future from today. A report that was intercepted Indicates that in Ghana, in Ghana, about 90% of the young people are involved. The young people between the ages of 8 and 16 are involved in pornography. Very damning. But 90% of the young people between the ages of eight, also for can you imagine eight years to sixteen? You are not talking about the twenties, you like the DCOPs and the, the, the rest. You are talking of eight to sixteen. Very damning. Are involved in pornography in this country. How do they do it? They are on their, on their phones. 
They go to YouTube. They go to places. They know. They know all the signs that we don't know. I'm not aware. I don't know any pornography site. Even as I stand here. But they know all of them. They are, they, and and, and uh, the pornographic uh, things like that too, it could be very long. Because most of the times, I mean, things that are put on site, the site things are very long. You see the, the address are very long. HTTP slash this dot whatever. And they know all of them. And you don't know what is in John 13, 13. You don't know First John 2, 14 and 15. But they know all those things. Between the ages of 8 and 16 are involved in pornography. 90% of, only 10% are innocent of what I'm talking about. And I believe that there are some of you in the church today under the sound of my voice that are involved. Else, God will not let me come and talk about this. It is a night around you. Get out of it. Before it ruins you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Young people of our time are cajoled by the devil to indulge in all sorts of horrendous deeds in this country. As I've mentioned, fornication, rape, smoking, drinking, armed robbery, fraud, lesbianism, gayism, occultism, etc. These are the, the kind of nights around us and we are supposed to repair. Note that the fact that one is a member of a church, the fact that you pray does not mean, does not necessarily mean that you are insulated from it. You are supposed to be wise and you should be determined to stay out of such things. In Genesis chapter 34, verses 1 following, the Bible speaks of a young lady from a good home. Genesis 34, 1. It speaks of a young lady from a very good home. Who ended up becoming defiled and brought disgrace to her good home. She was called Dinah. Dinah was the only daughter of Jacob, the man of God. The only sister of the 12 great sons of Jacob. The Rubens, the, Lev the Levi, the, the uh, Naphtali's, the uh, what are the rest? Benjamins, the Josephs, their only sister. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Uh, she went into the world. She was supposed to be in her own world. She went out of her own world to the other world. And something happened. Can you give me the next verse? And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. See, the Bible is very figurative. <laughs> Huh? She took, he took her and raped her. Why? Because Dinah was roaming about. Hello? Why did Shechem, the unscrupulous boy, how was, was he able to get Dinah? Because Dinah was roaming about. Dinah was aimlessly walking around. Watch man, what night is this? If you're a young lady and you walk aimlessly, you just roam about. Sometimes you just wake up in your room and say, ah, look at, see how I look. Let me go out there and show how I look. You are going out there to be defined, destroyed. 
you are allowing, I mean, things that are not very good to enter your mind. Look at how I look. Let me go out there to show. You are going out there to be destroyed. Dinah, that is what happened to her. She came from a good home. The family prayed. She was attending church. Her father was a bishop. Jacob. I mean, Jacob, great man of God. But this is what happened to his daughter. Why? Because the daughter was roaming about. She could not understand the night of her time. That she was living in a time when you, if you are just roaming about, somebody can just rape you and destroy your future. Like it happened to Monica Lewinsky. Her future was ruined. And the president who was already hooked to his wife. What night is this? Be careful of the night. Amen. Be careful of the night. David committed fornication. Why? Because he was idle. David the king in 2 Samuel chapter 12. He committed, even not fornication, he committed adultery because he was married and then committed adultery, had sex with a, a married woman. Why? Because he was idle. The scripture said it was a time when kings went to war. He was supposed to have led his army to war. When the army left, he said, let me stay home. And he was walking on top of his building, his story building, looking at beautiful girls in the country. And then that is what brought David down. When you become idle, you roam about, you become aimless. It is easy for you to be destroyed by the night of your time. Tell your friend, wake up. Be careful. Hallelujah. Let me give you seven ways by which you can overcome or you can survive the night of your time. I'm giving you seven. How to survive the night of your time? I'm giving you seven ways, seven principles. Seven weapons. I'm putting them in your hands. To survive the night of your time. There are seven ways to survive the night of my time. One, hmm. remember that not all information is good for you. First Corinthians 6 verse 12. Remember that not all information is good for you. First Corinthians 6 12. 6 12, it says that Everything is permissible. God. See, still using the word lawful, helpful, because the other one was 1023. This says 12. Let me give me NIV so that there will be difference. I just need difference. First Corinthians 6, verse 12 from NIV says, Everything is permissible for me. But not everything is beneficial. Hallelujah. Everything is permissible for me. But not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me. But I will not be mastered by anything. Praise the Lord. This is so great for me. Everything is permissible for me. But I will not be mastered. I will not be enslaved by anything. And he gives you explanation that I will not be brought under the power and allowing it to control me. Hallelujah. Not all information is good for you. Be careful. The young people you have access to internet. Internet is more available in our time than before. 
but go to the internet or go on in, uh, on online with your head on your neck. Do you understand me? With your head on your neck. That means that you should use the internet and the information online with wisdom. When you go to cafe, don't be lured by nudity. Nakedness online. Be careful. Don't be interested in looking and watching naked videos and pictures. It will destroy you. What night is this, watchman? Not all information is good for you. Number two. If you mistakenly sin, you should quickly ask for forgiveness and repent. This is how you can survive the night of your time. If you mistakenly sin, you should quickly ask for forgiveness and repent. You should not throw in the towel. You shouldn't give up to the gathering of the brethren. Because Jesus said that he who is well does not need a doctor. One of the things that destroy people, especially the young people, is that when they fall into trouble, then they stay out, they quail. They begin to run away from the places they can receive help. Be careful. Watch that. You are in the church. If mistakenly you sin, don't run away from the church. You should ask for forgiveness immediately. And then repent from it. Don't begin to run away from the church. Your pastors will be searching for you and you'll be running away. You don't want to show up. Why? Because you want to continue. The devil wants you to go and continue. One thing that God does not like about men is to continue in sin. Don't continue. If you mistakenly sin, come out of it and seek for help. Give yourself the time, the chance to be helped out. Say the truth. Confess it to your pastor. Confess it to your mom, your dad, your counselor, your cell leader, your rabbi. Confess and say, please, this is what I've done. What, what, what can you do to help me? It is better. Than to keep it and be destroyed by it. Number three. Love, if you want to survive the night of your time, love and study the word of God. Psalm 119, 105. As a young person, if you want to survive the night of your time, I exhort you to love and study. The word of God. Love and study the word of God. Psalm 119. Can I have it? 105. This is what the word of God says. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light to my path. You see? Darkness is there. Night is around you. But how can I survive it? You need light. It is only light that night is afraid of. And the light of your world is the word of God. Hallelujah. If you are full of the word of God, the night is afraid of you. 
Because anytime the night comes with all its antics, you say it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. And if you don't know the word of God, the devil can easily outweigh you, overcome you, and destroy you. I met a young girl that was defiled. She was just misled to believe that at her age, as she was growing up, if she did not get herself in sexual intercourse, somebody deceived her. If she did not get herself in that, she was going to be tok tok. She was going to be jimmy jimmy. The kind of that's all. That is how she was misled. But if she knew the word of God, she would have said to herself that I am the temple of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord dwells in me. Bible said that if anyone destroys the temple of God, he himself shall be destroyed. I am a temple of the Lord. I am a branch of Christ. Should I give my, my body to fornication? No. That is what the Bible says. Number four. Render total obedience to God's commandments. John chapter 2, 3 to 5. John 2, 3 to 5. Render total obedience to God's commands, God's word. Because we, I'm not saying you should just love it and study it. You should also obey. Be ready to obey God's word. Hallelujah. Be ready to obey God's word. John 2, 3 to 5. Bible says, when the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. Move on, sir. For Jesus said to her, woman, what is that you and uh, you and what is it that to you and to me? My time is not yet up. Next one, five. Check the five. Then the mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Be an ardent, obedient boy or girl of God. That anything that I want to do, if it is Jesus that said it, I will do. Anything that someone wants me to do, if Jesus did not say that, I will not do. Number five. Strive for holiness. Strive for holiness. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. Strive. Strive. It means that you should, you, should, you should do all you can. It is not easy to be holy. But do all you can. You should, should be strong at it. Strive to be holy. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. Scripture says, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Another version said that be holy in all that you do. Can I get a 16? 16 verse 16. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. Bible said that he's quoting this one from Leviticus. I think 44. Leviticus 44. Apostle Peter quoting it from Leviticus 44. The Bible says that we should be holy in all that we do. So don't go and hide in an uncompleted building and misbehave. Whatever you are doing there, God is watching you. It is your night that is approaching you to swallow you and you are not careful. You don't know. Be careful. The young people of our time should rise up. So that night, the night that is around us will not overcome us. 
God is giving us power to overcome our night. Amen. In Hebrews 12, 12, he says that for without holiness, no one can see God. Why are you in the church? Are you not striving to go and see God? Are you not in the church so that you can make heaven? Yes. And he's saying that without holiness, no one can see God. Hebrews 12. So if you don't strive for holiness, count yourself out of heaven. Amen. Because it is written. Can I get the, 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 the Hebrews 12? 12, 12. And then we can even get 14. Therefore, strengthen the hands which are hung down and the feeble knees. You know, the verse 12 is so great. Said that you should strengthen your hands. If your hand is weak and the things you are doing, it is, it is draining you, sending you to the grave. Strengthen yourself now, today. Therefore, strengthen the hands that which hang down and the feeble knees. 13. And make straight paths for your feet. So that what is lame may not be dislocated. You see? The things that you are involved today, you are not seeing the, the resource, the effect now, but the effect is ahead of you. But I have come to exhort you to rise up and strengthen yourself and walk over it. Other than that, what is even the, uh, uh, lame will become dislocated in future. 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Hallelujah. Without holiness, you can't see the Lord. Number six. Share your challenges and experiences with your resourceful, experienced, caring, and loving brethren in the Lord. Share your challenges with resourceful, experienced, caring, loving brothers or brethren in the Lord. If you are a young person, you are struggling with something, you are struggling with masturbation, you are struggling with anything evil. The thing is disturbing you. Share it with people who are experienced, who are loving, resourceful people. That is why in the church you have pastors over you, you have cell leaders and all that. Share. Don't hide it. If you hide it, the devil will kill you. Come out and say, no, this thing is happening to me. I don't like it. How can you help me? Seek for help. Amen. Many a times you run away. You go and hide with the devil and then you continue the, the thing. You should share. Amen. You can take this scripture, Hebrews 10, 19 to 26. Hebrews 10, 19 to 26. And then John 15, 15 and 16. Hebrews 10, 19 to 26. He's talking about the fact that you should not give up to the gathering of the brethren. Bible is saying that don't give up to the gathering of the brethren. Anytime we meet, be there. Don't say that I, because I am sinning, I am running away. Come so that the word of God will rebuke you. And then you go and stop. Amen. When you do something, then we will rebuke you in the church. Be happy because we want the best for you. We want you to make heaven. Don't say that because my pastor rebuked me. I don't go to church. You are ruining yourself. It's not the pastor. The pastor is doing his work. As an oracle of the Lord. When the Lord wants to speak to you, he speaks through your pastor. This morning, many of you are involved in the things I am talking about. That's why God is asking me to speak about this. Last one. And I close. Hallelujah. Hmm. Be prayerful. Hallelujah. That is the last, that the seventh weapon to overcome the night of your time. is prayer. Be prayerful. Matthew 26, 41. Be prayerful. Hebrews 5, 7. Be prayerful. Jesus himself, when he came to this world, the night was around him and he only overcame it by prayer. Scripture said that he, Jesus, in the days of, of uh, when he was on this earth, he lifted up prayer with groans to the one who could help him. Amen. Prayer. Second Corinthians 10 trade. Bible said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
There's a stronghold in your heart and your mind. It is destroying you. It's always convincing you to go and do evil. It is a stronghold. The strongholds are not always your grandmother to fire her. Fire, fire, fire yourself. When you know that something is wrong with your mind, it always leads you to go and do evil. That is the enemy you are dealing with. Mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray. And say that, check out of me. Hey. I am not born for this. I cannot be ruined at this time. Amen. I am of the glory of the Lord. Hey. Praise my God. Pray I will help you. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and let's go. My God. Glory, glory, glory. Begin to worship the Lord. Begin to worship the Lord. Pray for strength. Pray for strength. Pray for strength. What night is this? Oh, what night? What night is this? What night is this? Oh, what man, what night is this? You are living in a dark world, full of evil. Oh, what man, what night is this? You are living in a dark world, full of evil. Oh, what man, what night is this? What night is this? Oh, what man? What night is this? You are living in a dark world, full of evil. What night is this? You are the light of this world. Be a light. Oh, what man, what night is this? Anything you cannot sustain, do not start. Oh, what man, what night is this? Anything you cannot start, do not start. Oh, what man, what night is this? Ilai <laughs> 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 
to repair the night with your life. What night is it? La 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 But not is Hey, oh, what man, what night is this? Thank you for watching Word Power from Very Reverend Emmanuel Chumesiang, the General Overseer of Logos Chapel Worldwide. To our virtual worshippers who wants to contribute to Very Reverend Emmanuel Chumesi and Crown Ministries, please send your tithes, seeds, offerings to the MTN number 0554-186-403. 0554-186-403. You are encouraged to join us again next Wednesday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. to enjoy the messages. God bless you for watching.